everybody, I'm Lady Red and this is Lady Red's Tech Reviews and today we're going to take a quick look and unbox the Google Pixel 5a 5G. So stay here. Leave a like on the video if you enjoy the content. Drop a comment if you have any questions and as always, subscribe to my channel, ring that bell and get all the notifications for the new videos. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to unbox the Google Pixel 5a 5G. Just got this device, had it a couple of days now, and I am so impressed with it. So I want to show you the unboxing. Now we're not going to go too awful deep into it today. Uh, there will be more videos in the future with more in-depth reviews on the camera and the features and the functionality and performance of it, and even some comparisons to the Motorola One Action, which I'm using to record right now. Be sure to stay here until the very end of the video. There will be a full spec list and some camera samples. I don't have a whole lot. It's been raining for a couple of days, but I got some pretty good shots. So let's take a look at it. Includes Pixel 5a 18 watt USB-C power adapter, charging cable, and quick switch adapter. Requires Google account, internet access, and or paid subscription to some features, acceptance of arbitration, terms of use, blah, 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 blah. Requires a 5G data plan, not compatible with 5G millimeter wave. So without further ado, Let's open it back up and see what we've got. I have had this phone about 16 hours and, and I'm dying to get it out of this box. And there we have it. The Pixel 5a 5G. We have your device. Feels good. Feels real good in the hand. Not too light, not too heavy. In the box, we have your SIM key. Your stuff people don't read. This is your adapter, USB to type C. And you can use this to transfer your data from one phone to another. And we have the Type-C to Type-C power cord. This will also come in handy if you do not have a Type-C charging block. But you can also use any standard Type-C charger. And your charging block, which is Type-C to Type-C. Let's take a look at this fantastic device. All right, here we have a very durable, very solid build. The color on the box says almost black. It's almost black, all right. It's kind of a greenish, really. On the back, we have your dual camera dock right here. Uh, with your LED flash, your fingerprint sensor, and on the side, your power key and volume rocker. I wanna make a little note on the power key. It's got a little texture here, so it's easy to find if you're fumbling in the dark. On the top, we have da -da -da -da, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a microphone on the front. You've got your front camera and your speaker on the bottom. Look at that. Dual bottom firing speakers and Type-C charging port. And your SIM tray is right here on the side. Let's put a SIM card in it. Okay, now here I have my G-Stylus. And as many of you know, I have Cricut service. I'm going to take my SIM card out. I checked the IMEI yesterday on this, on the Pixel. And I checked it on the website, on the Cricut website, and it says it is compatible with 
Cricut service. As stated in a previous video, you should always, 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 always check your SIM cards. Did I not? There it is. Before, or check your device before you put your SIM card in any new device to make sure it's compatible because you could end up with your line suspended. But I checked this one on the website yesterday. It says it is compatible with our service and not only is it compatible with Cricut service, it is hotspot compatible. So, let's fire it up. Okay, so we're all set up and ready to go. And as you can see, we have still got some stuff downloading. So what it's doing right now is downloading 96 applications. I keep a lot of apps in my phones. So once those have downloaded, I'll set up my home screen. But until then, we're gonna go ahead. I like a clock on my home screen. I like this one. So there's your clock on your home screen. Let's check out, these are the apps. You have the complete Google suite and it is still downloading all of my apps in here. So we're just gonna let that keep downloading before we set up my folders and my home screen. Okay, so we're gonna go through the settings while that finishes its setup process. And turn the screen up just a little bit so it's easier to see. All right. Wi-Fi, we are connected to Spectrum right now. And I'm not going to disconnect just yet to show you the hotspot just because I'm still downloading my apps. So we have... Uh, network and internet and there's your connection options and once again hotspot is available with this device but we're not going to open that just yet I want to let everything finish downloading first connected devices if you have anything paired to Bluetooth which I'll be doing that later NFC is available of course this is a pixel um, you can connect to your printer. Uh, the cast feature is available with this if you want to connect and cast it to your TV. Uh, nearby Share, Android Auto, and moving right along. We have your apps and notifications. And right now I'm sitting at 61 apps and I have several more to go. So we're going to go on past that. And there is no bloatware with this phone, so there's nothing to show you how to uninstall. Uh, your battery. Now this has a huge battery in it, the biggest battery of any Pixel. Uh, so if you're curious, if your battery's running down, maybe you've got an app kicking on in the background, then you would tap this right here and it will show you if it's running normally. Uh, adaptive battery is on, extends battery life based on your phone use, and it does this by shutting down apps that you are not using. So, many times someone comes in my store talking about their phone's dying quickly, that's what I check first to see where the power is going. Uh, display, of course, um, dark theme is automatically enabled with this one because it copied my settings from other phones and I always use dark mode. If you want to turn off dark mode, this is where you would do that. You just toggle it off right there and get blinded by all that white light. Screen timeout. My previous setting was at two minutes. You can set it wherever you would like it. Uh, I turn off all of auto rotate, but there you go. You get an, an increased tension sensitivity. If you're using tempered glass, which I will be installing liquid glass on this later today, and um, then you would definitely want to do this because sometimes with tempered glass, you have to really mash on it to uh, get your phone to do anything. Uh, sound and vibration. This is also where you would set your do not disturb schedule, which I already have mine set. Every night it turns off at 10 o'clock. Uh, live caption. Oh, this is interesting. Automatically capturing your speech. We'll be playing with this later in another video. Media. There's your show your media player with your clock. Now playing, uh, this is if there's, um, 
Let's say you're in a store and you hear a song that you like and you can check out the now playing and see exactly what song that is so you can download it or add it to your playlist. Uh, the phone ringtone, dial pad tones. Um, these are handy to keep turned on because many systems when you call in everywhere you call now you have to push a button and uh, some of the older systems won't register unless you do have a dial pad tone. So I always keep those turned on so when I call somewhere and they say push a button it hears the button. Uh, screen locking sound I'm going to turn that right back off. Charging sound and vibration. I like that because then I know it's been plugged in. Touch sounds. Meh. Don't need that. I do like my keyboard to tap a little bit though. Uh, storage. Plenty of storage. 128 gigs onboard storage. And it says 20% used, but like I said, I've got a lot of apps loading into this phone right now. Right now we're sitting 11 gigs. Look at that. Lots of apps. 3.9 gigs of photos and videos lots and lots of storage but it is a pixel there is always cloud storage available uh, privacy your permission manager your passwords display characters briefly as you type and yada 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 here we go okay, and your security um play protect security update it is up to date find my device the so screen lock swipe for now, I'm going to turn that right back off again. I'm going to set up my fingerprint with it later on. And once I do that, then I'll be able to use uh, Google Smart Lock, which Google, that's where Google saves your password for you. App pinning off. We're going to leave that off. SIM card lock. Just leave that alone. Just don't even mess with that. Too many people screw. I have to go and get a new SIM card because of that. Because SIM cards are sensitive and they don't like to be locked. So just leave that alone. And accessibility. Always make sure these are turned off. Font largest, display size default. Magnification is all turned off. That is where you control all of that. Yep. Okay. And if you want to do anything in your Google account, like if you want to restore your contacts, this is where you would go to do that. System. Everything you want to know about your system. If you want to change your keyboard, um, the gesture navigation, if you would prefer different gestures, this is where you set it up. System navigation. And if you prefer the three button, you can always go back to it here. I like the gesture, so we're going to leave it there. Flip to shh. Uh, you can turn this on if you want to just be able to flip it over and make it stop ringing. About phone. And here we go with all of the phone information that you're going to need. Um, if you need to call your carrier and register your IMEI with them, this is where you would find your IMEI. Model 5A. Bluetooth address. Uptime. Build number to open developer options. There we go. That's all you do. Tap it seven times. And there you have your developer options. As you can see, we're looking with six gigs of RAM right now. Some of it is in use while it's bringing in my backup. And your bug report, stay awake. If you don't know what it is, a good rule of thumb is don't mess with it. What I do like to do with every new device that I have is scroll right down here. There's a couple of things. Maybe make sure mobile data is always active. Hardware acceleration. I disable absolute volume uh, because I do use Bluetooth speakers. I do use my earbuds and then if I want it loud, I want it loud. And I go right down here to the animations and turn them all off and that is generally all I do in the developer options if you want to check and see if you have any system updates you would check that here clearly we're updated to Android 11 we are up to date with this one all right, so the gesture navigation on this one is going to be a little different than what I'm used to. Um, you're going to 
flip up for your app drawer. And this is where I'm, I've been using this all day today and I'm still trying to get the hang of it. Uh, flip up down here for Google Assistant and just tap to excuse it. And then flip, same thing down here. Google Assistant. Now, to get to your recent apps, this is the tricky part for me. You're going to make a curve. You can also take a screenshot that way, too. It's a little different. The back button is still the same. You know, if you were reading something and you wanted to just hit the back, you just flick it. So, camera. That's what we've all been waiting for, right? This has a fantastic camera. I have been playing with it all day today. Now, the different camera modes, those where y'all can see them, uh, standard camera, now up here you're going to notice 0.6, that's your wide angle, 0.2 is a bit more zoomed, we're going to look at some pictures in just a second, the portrait mode is automatically adjusting, you're not going to need, you're not going to find it necessary um, to blur, to adjust the blur, and again, we'll look at those in a few minutes, night sight, the sun just now went down, so I haven't had a chance to use that one yet. Video modes, slow motion normal, and time lapse. Uh, there's your auto stabilization. And the different modes. The panorama is standard stuff. I'm still getting the hang of the photosphere. Um, I played with it a little bit today. And, of course, your Google Lens, which is super handy if you're just wanting to look something up. You know, you got a picture of it. You don't know what it is. A flower. I've used it for flowers. I've used it for um, uh, food if I wanted to look up like the nutritional content of something. Um, for your settings, right up here at the top, you're going to see the little arrow. You're just going to bring that down. And there's your settings. Now, one warning I would like to issue. Um, in 4K, I'm going to have to flip that back over to full HD and 30 frames per second. Um, now, uh, I did notice in 4K with 60 frames per second, which is the absolute best, it took a really great shot. Um, I was just kind of playing with it for a couple of minutes, and it did get hot. I took a 2 minute and 22 second video, and I noticed at the about the 2 minute mark is where it started to sort of heat up on the back. Not real hot but it was warm um i ran it for i felt it gradually getting warmer so i just went on ahead and cut it off because i was at work i didn't want to kill my battery just yet uh because 4k does take a lot of battery but when a phone gets hot like that that means it's really working so you might want to keep that in mind i'm going to reserve um the absolute best for short shots um, I'm not going to use that for standard video recording. Um, for standard video recording, this is fine. Full HD at 1080p at 30 frames per second. If I'm doing something and I want more detail, then obviously I can make some adjustments. Um, but definitely be aware of the overheating issue if you're in 4K with 60 frames per second. And that's the only real issue I saw. I didn't have any issue at all with anything being pixelated. Um... Let's look at some shots. My dogs had a party while I was gone today. Um, these will also be featured. Let's see if I can get that to flip and it's not going to do it. Uh, at the very end of this video, you'll see them. Um, took some portraits. I took some standard selfies. Uh, this was my day this morning. You can say it was a funky, stormy, nasty mess. Kind of like the house was after I got home, and the dogs and the cats had been in by themselves all day. So, you can see here, really, really good definition. And this was my attempt with the photosphere. Still not real good with it. So, we're just going to keep, like, uh, yeah, I, I still haven't quite figured this one out yet. Um... This is just a short little video here that I shot at work in between <sighs> storms. You can see it was a pretty funky day today. And I did get to play in like with the uh, portrait mode and wide and in portrait and in landscape. Uh, and check that out. You can actually see the bricks and you can see the mortar. 
you can even almost read the time on the door there, the hours, and blurt it out really nicely. Great detail, and I don't use filters or beauty mode or anything like that. Um, I feel like that's fake and it's a misrepresentation of myself, so I don't use those. You can see it really blurred that background very nicely. And I play with it. I like this. This is ColourPop, where it blurs the background. I really like that one. That is very nice. You can access that in your editing. Uh, another one that I took is some horses. And that was seriously on the side of the road. Like, I stopped in the middle of the road. There was a car behind me. It was terrible. But, um, that is, uh, I, it, it is an awesome camera. Um, definitely better than my G-Stylus. I will be comparing this to my Motorola One Action. Yes, it's a 2019 phone, but it has a fantastic camera. That's where I'm recording with right now. And, um, so definitely will be looking forward to that in the future, to seeing the comparison between those two. Um, overall, this phone is quick. It is snappy. I've been using it all day. Um, you can see the difference in the time between this morning when I was recording, and this is 8.48 p.m. Um, so uh, definitely digging this phone. I, I have absolutely no complaint about it. If you want to hear the speakers... We're going to have to, whoa, wrong one. Still not used to that YouTube music app. It just kind of gets in the way because I don't use it. What we're going to do is pull up one of my videos so I don't get into any kind of copyright claim madness. And let me find one of my, there we go. And then let you see the display on it too. I've been watching TikTok and all kinds of stuff on it today. And you can follow me on TikTok too. I'm Lady Red Stack Reviews there. Hi everybody, I'm Lady Red, and this is Lady Red Stack Reviews. In this video, we're gonna take a look at and the And you can zoom in, zoom out. New X Turn the volume up. AI powered noise canceling true wireless earbuds. Not too loud that it, not so loud that it blares. I'm super excited to look at these. But it, de it does have good the video, clear uh, sound. XRL contacted me um, about a year or so ago. I did a video on a pair called the Arias, and I really loved those. And they were so happy. They said, "Hey, we really like the your display video. is sharp. Would you like to take a look at these?" I said, "Heck yeah! Who wouldn't? They're great quality, great sound, and I'm really looking forward tell. to this. Uh, these new AI. You can feel the vibration." wireless earbuds. So, let's stay here and take a look. Leave a like. Automatically turn on when you take them out. Just touch it. You see how quickly seconds. that picks up? On either one. A lot of phones will lag. Of course, I've got good Wi-Fi here, too. On the left, skip to previous. Three on the right to go to the next one. Let's find one of my unboxings, and there is a reason for that. There's one right there. Hi, everybody. I'm Lady Red. We're this is go Lady to Red. the end. Over here, you got your Google Launcher. Maybe I'm a little bit of a tr This phone. That sounds really nice. definitely great sound quality great display I'm very happy with this one and this I want to show you the difference between what I'm used to using and what this is it is so hard to text from this side of the phone like I can't reach all the way over there I can reach the whole thing with this one 
So that's really cool. I'm so excited about this phone. This was my gift from Google, the 5A 5G Pixel. How awesome do you think it is? I think it's pretty awesome. I'm really happy with it. It is now my daily driver, and there will be further videos in depth with the camera and comparisons, um, for the camera at least, with my Motorola One Action, which is not a 5G phone, but it does have a fantastic camera. So please stay tuned for the full specs and the photo samples at the end of this video.